In this video, I'm going to focus on conducting a one-way ANOVA. Um, this is a between subjects design, and I'm going to demonstrate the SPSS procedure using the drop-down menus, the point and click. Um, so this example is uh, a data set that has gender, and the values range from one to three for men, women, and non-binary or other. And then we have the Beck Depression Inventory. So this is appropriate for a one-way ANOVA because these are mutually exclusive groups. You're only in one of them. Um, so we're not looking at paired uh, relationships between variables. And then we also have a dependent variable that is a score. Um, and you can see that it's set up as scale here. So this is scale. That's what we need for a dependent variable. So ANOVA is an omnibus test. Omni is all. Um, what it does is it looks for any differences between these pairs. So um, it could be that there's differences between men and women in depression. It could be that there's differences between um, women and non-binary individuals. It could be that there's difference between men and non-binary individuals. So we need to find out where that difference is. So first thing we do is we run the test um, and we do a, this omnibus test. We look to see if there's any difference. And then we look at our samples. We look at our, our um, not our samples, sorry. We look at our pairs. Of, very, of levels of this variable uh, in a post hoc analysis to see where the difference is. Uh, now, you could run this without the post hoc that we've been talking about in class and then see if you get a significant uh, variation across these groups because you don't need a post hoc unless there's a significant, significant overall difference. Um, so I'll talk more about that in the interpretation video that follows this. So I'm going to go ahead and go to analyze uh, now that I've verified my data set up correctly. We're still going to go to compare means, and this time we're going to go to this one way ANOVA here. So I'll click there. My dependent list, I could test multiple dependent variables at the same time if I want to, um, but I'm only going to test the one that I have, which is my back depression inventory score. And again, remember that this is going to be your interval or ratio um, measurement variable, which is the back depression inventory. So we think that there's going to be a difference in back depression inventory by gender. So I'm gonna take gender and that is my factor. So I want to look, oops, excuse me. Um, I want to look at this uh, as a factor. So I'm gonna take gender and I'm gonna move it to factor. And I wanna cl uh, click estimate effect size here. And there's a couple other things that I wanna do. So um, first I want to go to this, um, go to this uh, post hoc. So I'm going to click post hoc and what the post hoc is. So post is after. Um, the idea again is that if we find a significant overall difference, we need to identify where those differences are that are significant. So we're going to use the two key post hoc. Um, and so with that uh, for two key, I will explain how that works with the little individual tests. Um, there's there's other ways to manage this, but we're going to use two key. So we're going to say continue. Um, you can also look at options. Um, we could add descriptive statistics, which I would like to do. I also want to add a homogeneity of variance test. And so this is like um, the Levine test that we Levine's test that we did for equality of variances in our independent samples t-test. Uh, it's looking to see are the group variances equal. So um, these are not randomly assigned groups. And uh, because of that, we may have some differences between our groups and this tests for that. So I will show you in the interpretation how you manage that. So we're gonna say continue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. You'll notice that we have a lot of information here. Um, this gives you a lot of detail because we have our overall test, we have our descriptive information, we have more levels of this variable. Um, and so we're going to uh, look at how this works. So I'm gonna export this to Word and I'm gonna go to File, Export. I'm going to Browse and I'm gonna uh, save this to my desktop and I'm gonna call this BDI Output. The reason why I'm going to export it is so that I can access it not on um, not in a porto. So 
I can access a Word document anywhere, but I can't open a saved output in SPSS at anywhere. So I need to be able to do that. Um, so I'm going to save this. And actually, if you save it as a dot doc, um, it looks prettier for the most part. Uh, so I had been using doc X and then I noticed that the, the dot doc is a little bit prettier. It doesn't make a big difference, but something you might want to be aware of. So the video after this is going to go into the details um, of this output, and that is the end of this. Um, that is the end of this video.